Hi, I'm Ed Scott, and as you can see here, I've recently got myself the Galahad Armoured Officers for Conflict 47. I'm quite liking these models for all of the factions, and I plan to collect the full set eventually. For those who haven't heard of Conflict 47, it is an alternate reality World War II tabletop game with some science fiction fun stuff thrown in. Science fiction fun stuff like personal powered armoured suits like these British Galahad suits. These models from Warlord Games come in at about £12 for three, although you might get a little discount if you find a third party retailer with them in stock. Whilst not the cheapest models ever, they are metal and a low production run, so I think they are quite a reasonable price. Although that might also be because I really like the models, so who knows. Each model has just a few parts, I washed them in soapy water and left to dry overnight, and there's some very faint mold lines that clean up pretty easily, and as far as I could tell, no casting imperfections. I quickly glued the models together with super glue and sprinkled just a little touch of baking powder in places that wouldn't be visible to add to the strength of the model. And whilst I had those out, I textured the base with blobby layers of the same super glue and baking powder to create sand dunes. Real sand, compared to the scale that the models are, doesn't really look like sand. It looks like kind of gravel. If you're making gravel or rubble, that's great. Use sand. But for in-scale sand, you actually want something much finer, and in my case, I use baking powder, and that works quite well. Each of the assistants to the officer have a light machine gun, the Vickers K, which is quite cool. But the officer himself has an M1 Thompson. Now, I've never been a fan of the M1 design. I much prefer the 2821 variants, and my other British models have the 1928, so I'd like to make them match. However, as I was hunting around for a 1928 Thompson, which I would have thought would be an extremely common design, but apparently there's only one or two around, I remembered that there was another submachine gun that might actually be even more appropriate. Conflict 47 not only brings in some science fiction, but also some future historical designs like the British EM2 rifle from the 1950s. And that mixes up the eras and the science fiction to just to make things a little more interesting. So why not also bring in a later British submachine gun, the Sterling? And this isn't even as much of a stretch as the EM2 because it was designed in the early 1940s and so it was around, it just wasn't historically being mass produced. Well, I found this STL by Ruffian and I printed one out. I slightly skewed it into hero scale and very carefully I cut away the Thompson and replaced it with the Sterling. Well, that took altogether far too long to explain. Let's get stuck into painting. I started by priming in grey and using an airbrush to base coat a sand colour of the whole of each of the models as I'm going for a desert look uh, as my British army is the desert rats. My first step with a real brush is to panel line with black, which is a variant of a very common technique. The antithesis of an edge highlight, the panel line, is to darken the recesses of armour joins to make them visually distinct and it helps with such small models to be able to easily tell kind of which bit is which. Commonly, this is one of the later steps when painting, but I like to get it done first so I can kind of be fast and messy with it, as any overbrushing will be covered by the later steps. And also, I don't have to be quite so thorough with those later steps, as I can just kind of leave a bit of that black showing through. And the next step, I got stuck into the camo pattern, and this is a pattern I've wanted to do for quite a while. Ever since I went to Bovington Tank Museum in South England, near Poole and Bournemouth, I took a bunch of reference pictures of all the fancy tanks and armour, and mostly I just took pictures of rust, if I'm honest. Uh, but I did take a picture of this M3 Grant because I really, really like it. Not only is it a dorky tank with this side casement and a really tall turret all the way up there, it's wearing a Tobruk era camo pattern that I really like and that scales nicely onto model tanks. But does it scale onto model people? Well, let's find out. I put on the brown splotches and I made sure to leave more than half of the model still in the sand paint as I wasn't fully decided at this point which bits would have the camo pattern and which bits would be painted differently. 
Certainly pouches and under armor and stuff like that would be painted differently, but things like the pipes and, and that kind of stuff, I wasn't sure, so I kind of made sure that there was enough sand and enough brown that I could go either way. I also made sure that each of the three models got a different pattern of splotches so that they don't look uniform when standing next to each other. Well, here is what those first two steps look like in comparison, which so quickly takes the model from a sandy blob to a defined set of armor. Those panel lines really do put in the work and the camo pattern I think is going to look great. To finish up the camo is just those edging lines, the double stripe of black and white. Now, white paint often doesn't cover very well in one coat, but I found that my grey paint, very light grey, really does cover, and my white paint on the top of that grey looks fine in just two coats, one of the grey, one of the white. And once that was done, I very carefully went around the same lines with black, so that I had a white line on the sand side and a black line on the dark brown side, just like the original armour. Moving on to some of the other parts of the model, and taking from my British infantry, I painted the pouches in a drab green, just very slightly highlighted with a tan green mix. This is just to add a variety of colour so that it isn't all just various shades of brown. The Under Armour uniform, however, did get a brown, but I wanted to make it at least slightly distinct from the armour itself, and so I gave it a much softer highlight of sand and in a moment I'll give it a dark wash as well, which will look quite different from the panel lining that the armour has. I did pick out a few other details at this step. I base coated the skin in brown and gave them a green beret. And yes, I did look up colours for berets, and yes, I gave up. The British Army have a whole thing with berets and which colour you're supposed to wear, and I'm just not sure what colour these should be, and I've decided that the Galahad army units in the fictional reality that I'm going for get green berets. It's alternate reality, I don't have to be historically accurate. The end. I did mention a wash a moment ago, so I'll talk about that now. I mix my own from matte medium and kind of inks so that I can have fine control over how they behave. And on this model in particular, I wanted to keep it to a minimum. My whole British army, uh, the Desert Rats, will end up very bright as they are in a sunny desert after all. And so the wash is only getting used on specific parts that need it. The trousers, the shirt and the head. And here is how those steps look. You can see those added colour, even just really subtle little spots, really help the overall look. And the wash did give those areas definition, but also making them look different from the armour. Well, at this point, there's really only a few last little details before the model is done. The base, of course, needs to be painted in, and I paint these in orange, as sand dunes do have a variety of colours, I went with the most striking orange, rather than brown, because the models are brown going on top. Over that, I dry brushed... Well, I've used the sand paint on a lot of this model, I really should use the sand paint for the sand. Uh, I carefully picked out the details of the face with a pre-mixed Caucasian paint mixed with some of the brown that I used for the base coat. I did a few layers with more of the Caucasian paint in each layer so that the nose, the cheeks and the brow were nice and bright. The guns and certain features of the armour got a metallic paint, although I did keep that to a minimum in this case. And there's also the screens at various points of the model and what appears to be a lamp on the officer's shoulder. The lamp got a blue-grey, on the lower half got a bright blue, and then some specular highlights in white. The wrist screens got the same technique but in greens. Dark green first, light green on the lower half, and white specks. And with just a tiny bit of fussing here and there, I called the models done. They're not a competition paint job certainly, but good enough for the tabletop. I really do like this Galahad armour. It's kind of reminiscent of old English knights, but with a lot of 1940s riveted armour technology vibe. And they look absolutely fantastic next to my bolt action models, standing quite a bit taller than because uh, I've got them on the different bases. I should probably get on with painting the rest of my desert rats. Um, I have a whole platoon and I've painted four of them, five of them, not many, not enough. One day, one day I'll get around to that and get these done. But 
Thank you for everyone for popping past to watch me paint these little models. Uh, head to the comments section below if you have anything to ask about them. Uh, but for me, for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and I will see you next time.